How are you guys doing? This is Josh here with Ohio Fish Rescue. Now today we're going to take a look at this 3,000 gallon aquarium. So some of you guys might be asking why is the water level down low in the 3,000? Well, I'll tell you guys, we are right now doing uh, water changes on all of the tanks right now. So we're having all the water run out through the drain. This is nice, new, fresh water pumping in. This is happening to every aquarium at the Ohio Fish Rescue right now because sometimes we like to give them fresh water. Even though our system has plants on it, has that everything we need to do, we still like to give them nice clean water for a couple reasons. For, for one, your water quality is better, but two, everyone gets to look in pretty amazing. Your water just looks pristine and uh, everyone's nice and happy. But today we're going to go ahead and talk about this 3,000 gallon aquarium. We probably built this thing maybe two years ago. Uh, I'd say close to that. But if you go on our Facebook, we do have a big build thread on this 3,000 gallon aquarium. But something about tonight just has me admiring this tank. But you guys keep asking about Miss Betty over here. As you guys can see, she looks a hundred times better. She still, you know, has some uh, labored breathing to her, but as you guys can see, she got her color back. She looks like a Paku again. She's no longer standing up at the top of the water gasping for air. She is now swimming around. She actually got her equilibrium back and she's able to swim straight now, which is pretty surprising. So Big Betty is doing great in this 3,000 gallon aquarium. Now you guys keep asking about, are we ever going to move Betty to the 58,000 gallon pond? And the answer to that is not anytime soon because Pakus love to bite cords and we have a lot of DC powered pumps and pond lights in there that we don't want to get you know, broken and bitten right now. So immediate plans, Betty's gonna stay in, in this tank for now. She might get bumped over to the 4400, but I'm just ecstatic that, you know, Betty's doing pretty fantastic in, in this tank. Now you guys, you see this guy right here. He's not camera shy. That is King. He is a uh, 18 inch doe vibe. As you guys can see, there's my hand. He's a pretty big guy. Now, normally Dovi can uh, do some pretty nasty damage in a tank like this, but you know, we put them in here, and this Oscar right here, which his name is Anubis, he is a, uh, I think the last time we measured him was 16 and a half inches. Yes, he has a crooked face, but we love him. He, he's big, and uh, that Oscar right there actually put the Dovi in his place because he came in and he, he was being a big old meanie. And this Oscar right there, here, let me just show you. Look at that guy. He's just massive. But uh, he put him right in his place and we haven't had no troubles with this Dovi. He is a big boy. He's got some nice, wonderful blue coloring to him. Just look at that. Let me get a little close up on him. There we go. He's just got some magnificent coloration on him. He's got blues, he's got greens. He's big and beautiful. Then we come up here. These are alligator guards. Now I'd say this guy is uh, a little over three foot long. As you guys can see, let me put my hand up by his mouth. They, he's a big boy. You guys get a little look from on top down. That is nothing to play with, my friends. That is a big beast. Now, uh, if you guys have watched some of our live feeds or know of the story, these are actually one fish that I am pretty scared of because I've actually been brutally attacked by alligator gar. So, you know, anytime I'm in the tank, I keep an extra eye on the alligator guards, especially in that big 58,000 gallon pond. But 
that's for another time. Let's get back to looking at some big fish here. Look at this shovel nose. Look at the belly on that guy. He's just a big old pig. And as you know, his friends over here, they all got big bellies. We've got Smash Mouth over here. Look at him. Oh my God. A face only his mother can love. Well, he surely is loved here at Ohio Fish Rescue. Look at that nice tiger stripe pattern. Just amazing. Now we come down here, we've got our little group. We've got three Niger catfish in here. And th these guys are a catfish that every monster fish keeper loves. Look at that face. He kind of reminds you of, of a sturgeon, but he's got that little sucker mouth there. They're always begging for food. They've got that nice uh, armored side. Them things are nothing to play with, especially of a cat with this size. That guy there, I'd say he's probably 34 inches, might be pushing three foot. These guys here are closer to 27-ish, maybe 26. That guy's probably 27. But these guys are just massive and beautiful. And as you guys can see, everyone here, their fins are all just in great shape. Now, my window's a bit dirty because uh, we haven't cleaned the, the, the glass yet. Oh my God. Nights like these, I just come out and sit in front of the tank and just appreciate the, the, the fish. It's something you don't always get, get to do, uh, you know, working with the rescue and you're always in and out, you're doing things, you're moving fish, you're curing fish, you're doing water changes. So just to come out here, sit down and enjoy this tank with you guys, I think it's pretty awesome. Here we've got uh, it's an 18 inch giant garami. This is a leucistic giant garami. Now we did have her in the albino tank and our true albino giant garami was getting into a fight with this guy so we had to split them up. So we went ahead and brought this giant garami over to the 3000. We're actually thinking about moving her to the pool, the 58,000 gallon pool with the other leucistic albino giant garami. So that might be something you guys will see in the future here. Could be something to, to look forward to. Looking over here at this guy. Now I know you guys always ask, well, what is this, this guy? No, this is a Disticatus sexifasiatus. Now he is pretty old. He came from a buddy of mine, Russ Eckardino. He loved the fish. And he knew that if he gave him up, he wanted him to come here and live out his life. Now, I've probably had this fish for a good, I want to say, probably two years now. But he's a big, peaceful fish. Now, these fish aren't always peaceful. They are known for, you know, being eye biters and scale biters. Every once in a while, he will act up. And if you guys can look over here, there's none now, but... You can actually see, he, 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 might, he might get in a fight with the alligator gar every now and again, and uh, he might start picking at their, their scales. But, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this guy. He's pretty peaceful, he's calm, he's big, he looks pretty. But if you guys see these guys when they are juvenile, they, they are bright tan colored, bright red tail, super dominant, you know, black stripes, and they just look pretty amazing. They, their colors sort of wash out as they get older. But you know, that's with every fitness you come by. But uh, moving over to this guy. This is a true Wallago Leary. This is a true monster in and himself. This also came from Rick Ferguson, and he's put on some size since he's been here. Let me tell ya. Well, when he first came in, he was super torn up by this guy because they were in the same tub in transport. Oh, you can see he's getting a little territorial there. But uh, the guy who dropped him off to us brought him up in the same tub. So King over here was beaten up on poor Wally the Wallago over here. And as you guys can see, his fins are just now starting to heal up. You, you can see the splits on his arms, a couple splits in his tail, but they are healing up and he looks a hundred times better. 
He eats like a champ. Look at that belly on him. This guy is just pretty awesome to feed. He's usually up at the top of the water and he's just taking pounds of flays. This guy always, you know, wanting the camera. He's a camera hog over here. No, actually, what what it is, I'm close to the tank right now. These boys all think it's feeding time. So, you know, we usually stand up over the tank and, you know, we come here. There we go. Look at him. He's thinking he's getting fed. <laughs> I just fed these guys last night, too, as you guys can see. Look at the bellies on them. They're always wanting more food. No matter how much I feed them, they will always want more. So with catfish like these, you do have to keep them on sort of a diet because you can overfeed a catfish and, you know, catfish will puke. And if they puke up their stomach acids, it's actually detrimental to the, the tank. Now, being in a 3,000 gallon, it's a little, little bit more lenient. But say if a, a catfish pukes in your 300 gallon pond, that could actually kick you off a lot of fish there. So you guys won't want to watch out. Don't ever overfeed your catfish. Don't be afraid to cut them off. All right, looking down here, we've got the marble cats. These guys have always been one of my favorite. They are a more peaceful cat. They will hold their, their ground, but they've just got them long flowing tentacles. Look at them things. And we've actually got a few uh, species of marble cats in, in here. Now, for over the years, they have broken these fish down into a few subspecies and putting them back. I talked about that in a previous video, but we do have all the subspecies in here. And we also have the creme de la creme of the uh, marble cat species. This is actually uh, uh, Liarius pictus, and this is a sail fin marble cat basically as you guys can see he's got that white band going from the, his top fin all the way down under his belly and uh they, they've been bitten off and they're actually regrowing right now i moved some fish that were actually fighting with them but a full-size lyrius picked this his tentacles will actually be longer than his actual body so they've actually got a lot of growing to, to do that they were bitten down almost to a nub. This is what I've gotten to grow back. And I've always, you know, kept one of these guys in my collection for years. And they've always been, been a favorite because when, when you feed, they'll come up to the top of the water. They'll start sticking their tentacles and whiskers out of the water. They'll wrap them around, around your arm. And I always just thought that that was the neatest thing ever. So I've always had to have, you know, Lyrius Pictus and... Uh, Liarius marmoratus over here. Just, you know, all the species of marble cat. They've always been, been a favorite here between me and my dad. So that's why we have a bunch of them. We have one, two, three, four, five in this tank. I have one more in quarantine. So uh, that is a lot of marble cats. But uh, we were talking with my buddy George online the other day, and he said that most people don't see him over 30 inches. And I'm like, well, true fact here. We actually had one that measured over 36 inches long. So I don't necessarily tell people how big a fish can get by, you know, what, what they say online because the internet can be wrong. What I try and tell people, you know, is on most of the, these catfish, I'll tell them by personal experience because we've had monsters for a long time. We've seen what they can max out in captivity. We, we know a lot of this information just from personal experience. And you know, sometimes the internet doesn't always have, you know, the best information on some, some of these catfish. So you know, the, the, the best way to do it is personal experience. Now, where's this guy hiding? So we've got back here, of course, we've got our red tail cats. There's actually two red tails in this uh, tank. Oh my God, let me see if I can get this guy. So this is one of the subspecies of marble cat. There he goes, I got him out for a better pit, uh, look at him. But as you can see, you can just see the pattern on that guy. He loves to hide in the driftwood back there. But that's one of the subspecies. You can see that guy has a different pattern than say, you know, that's hilarious. This guy over here, he's more just spotted and speckled. 
That guy has kind of, you know, striations and stripes with a little bit of a marble look to him. But that guy over there looked a lot cooler, in my opinion. But last but not least, let's get to this monster right back there. As soon as the fish clear out a little, little bit, there's actually two of them back there. That guy right there I'm trying to point at is a... 34 inch Adonis Pleco. He came from Gino and Pleco Paradise. This is a true monster Pleco. And that's, you know, this is nothing you'd want to stick into an acrylic aquarium because this guy's mouth is so big, so powerful, he can actually pit and dent the, the acrylic. So, and you know, on top of scratching it and all that. So, if you have a Pleco of this size, you either want to keep them in a, a pond or, you know, a, a plywood build like we do ourselves or a glass aquarium. So try not to stick big Pleco like this in an acrylic aquarium. Remember that. Always learn from our own mistakes. We've done it in the past and we've always regretted it. Now, the last guy I'm going to talk about in this tank is this guy right there. That is a Pseudodorus granulosus, also known as a granulated catfish. It is one of the three monsters of the armored catfish. Now, this guy we've had for a long time. Now, we had him in the 4,400 gallon tank, and uh, we put him in there probably about 12 in inches long, and we forgot we had him. And, uh, I couldn't find him in the 4400 anywhere and honest to God I thought you know he, he got e eaten or he died and the fish pick, picked him off because I didn't see him for about six years and then we were in there moving the uh, coral decorations out of the 4400 and all of a sudden I see this big massive fish just hiding in the shadows and I'm like what is this thing because I didn't put a fish of this size in the in the 4400 and I'm just like, holy cow, like what is this thing? So I, I got my net and I got this thing out from wedged in uh, the, the back side of the coral pieces, which we did, didn't normally check because they're big massive inserts and they weigh a lot. So he's been hiding back there out of my sight for six years. Now I told you we put him in there at about 12 inches. When we got him out six years later, he was 28 inches. So we brought him over here to the 3,000 gallon to put him on display and he's been in here since uh, this 3,000 has been built and I said that was about two years ago. So he's definitely put on some size but another cool story about this fish, you can look at his fin right there. You see something ain't right with uh, that bone. So he actually snapped that bone in half. Now I thought if you know he snaps a bone it's basically dead and there's no, no hope for it. The, the fin will grow back, but the bone will always be a snub. Well, it, the bone was still attached to his fin and somehow the bone actually regrew and now it's actually reattached to his arm. So I got lucky there and I've never seen it happen before. It probably will never happen again, but that right there is an injury that tells a story. So, that is enough of uh, looking at the 3,000 gallon aquarium for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the slow look and all the stories and all the inhabitants in the 3,000 gallon aquarium. I want to uh, thank you guys for stopping by and watching today's video. I just kind of spooked the fish a little bit. But uh, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay fishy, my friends.